Welcome to the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast with your host, Emmett Muckles. Please visit iTunes, Stitcher, or emmettmuckles.com to listen to all the episodes for free. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast. This is your host, Emmett Muckles. You can find the podcast on Stitcher and iTunes, but most of all, you can find it on EmmettMuckles.com. Do not spell my dad's name. It's E-M-M-I-T-T-M-U-C-K-L-E-S.com. That is where the Billionaire Lifestyle is hosted. Today, my guest is Julie Suzak. Zuzak. I see I did it anyway. I, this is like a thing with the Billionaire Lifestyle. But here's the difference. She's a podcaster, too, and she helps entrepreneurs find their mojo so that they can get out there, get it done, make it happen. But really, she's just an all around all around hot woman. She she gets it done. She makes it happen and she helps you out just like I want to do. Hi, Julie. Hi, Emmett. How are you doing? I'm doing good. So you got your yoga done this morning. You ready to go? Did you yep. do your warrior pose? Yep, 6, 6.30 a.m. class. That is the secret of life, secret to success, is morning yoga practice, always. So do you do a sun salutation when you guys go in there, or is it just... Well, I do many. I mean, if you're going to get literal, here you are busting out your knowledge, trying to trying to show me what you know. So this morning was actually uh, not a Hatha class. This was a hot yoga class. Oh, for God's sake. a set series. <laughs> Of 26 postures, and we actually don't have the sun salutation in this sequence, um, sadly. So is it all, were you doing, I know we're getting off track, but this is, we're family here, man. This is how we roll. So did you do the downward dog? Were you on the floor a lot, or or was it standing poses? Again, busting out your (laughs) yoga lingo. This is really impressive. There isn't actually a downward dog in this sequence either. So what it is, it's a series of 26 postures bookended by two breathing exercises. The first half of the class is a standing series of postures. And then the second half we do lying on the floor. And they're very deep backward bend uh, postures that we do. Yeah, there you go. See, and I have to I use yoga because I'm a muscular-esque kind of guy who is as stiff as a number two pencil okay so a couple years ago I could I was putting my pants on and my wife was looking at me she's like oh what's your problem I'm like what she's like you can't bend over I'm like yes I am she's like no you're fish hooking your pants <laughs> so, okay I don't actually know what fish hooking is but I'm gonna use my imagination yeah it's like you're throwing the pants down to your foot so you could pull it up. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, you know what we say, you know, flexible body, flexible mind. So doing yoga to do the physical conditioning will actually help you be more uh, open in terms of your thoughts, of your business, and being more strategic. So, so there's so, lots of advantages. So everybody, that, you know, that's the opening. Um, Julie's just giving you some morning glory stuff to happen so you can open up your mind, body, and spirit as you see the moniker on the billionaire lifestyle. It's about the Trinity. So I'm going to ask you first, let me know exactly what it is that you do. I want to hear your elevator speech. And then what we are going to do is we're going to journey back in time and see how you came to this point in your life right here. All the dirty deeds. (laughs) Okay. Sounds good. So uh, I run a company called The Corporate Yogi. And as you mentioned, as you kindly mentioned, I do have a podcast as well. And so the podcast is called Conscious Business with The Corporate Yogi. And so I like to work specifically with entrepreneurs. And what I do is I teach them all about mindset, having a healthy and powerful mindset, and help them realize that your business can't grow until you do. Because as you can attest to, being an entrepreneur is the most intense form of personal development that you'll ever go through through. And my purpose in life is to help people understand and realize that they're going to have to grow a lot as they start a new business. And so I help to normalize that. I help to teach them all of their strengths um, and help guide them through that growth. You know, understanding imposter syndrome, understanding that we're all going to go through that self-doubt and have those fears. And the sooner you can make all that conscious and understand what's going on in your mindset or your, what I say, your inner OS or inner operating system, the easier it will be on your journey to success. Wow, that's a lot to do. But you know what? I, you know, I, I feel a certain kind of kinship for North America 
and entrepreneurship is because literally that's what the country was based upon was building up something and typically in even back when this country was founded it was founded on entrepreneurship and when i say this country i mean canada and the united states because we were dominant by england which was those people were coming from Europe to set up, you know, new shops in the new world. And But even after that, when people started to immigrate, they came here with the hopes of starting their own business, being able to provide a service or provide something for other people. So when it comes to entrepreneurship, it's almost like when I talk to people, I have to remind them of the history that they have based upon. So, A, it's not about presentation and I can I'm doing this so I can make the most money it's doing it so you can make the most impact not only in your life but someone else's as well and that's a really good analogy Emmett because you're also bringing in the competition of you know all the different uh you know not only between Canada and the U.S. but like of you know this competition for land competition of getting here first and you know competition for resources you know that we still sort of exist and experience today yeah that's absolutely true so what got you to this point Oh, 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 oh. what happened? <laughs> what made you say, this is what I'm going to do? What was I thinking, right? That's what you really <laughs> want to ask. Um, so my journey, my entrepreneurial journey has been going on for about six years. And what I guess what the, the factor that led me up to this, well, I had worked in corporate for about 15 years and I had worked in marketing and communications for technology companies, which I have to confess, you know, I sometimes joke that everything that I did before I started this business was training for the business. So every, you know, I feel like every person that I worked for, every boss, every experience I had with a relationship with a coworker, uh, all the skills that I learned in, in my corporate life, uh, really set me up to be able to know how to run a business. And so, you know, I had always worked at technology companies, specifically a lot of startups. So, you know, it always amazed me how you could start with this business concept and everybody was so excited and would roll up their sleeves and do whatever it took to make the company successful. And then fast forward a couple years in when you grew to like 100 people or you started to have, you know, more offices around the world, you would lose that magic or that essence that happened in the very beginning of a company. And so as a company grew and scaled in terms of revenue and number of employees, the magic would almost, you know, disappear over the years. And so I was really focused on finding a way to help companies build a better culture and which really comes down to teaching them how to be better leaders. And in order to be a great leader, we reverse that engineer that to having a better sense of self and knowing who you are. Because when you when you have a clear understanding of who you are and you're focused on your personal growth, that's what allows you to be a great leader and inspire others. You know, one of the things that I found out is actually I began to see this around 2000, around 2000, where once upon a time, your leaders were um, 35, 40, 50 maybe older, they had families. So they had, even though they were kind of gruff blah, men or women who were just taxed to death, they had a breath of experience because they probably had a family. They understood the psychology of different personalities. 2000, I started to see where the guys were, tw these managers were 26, 27, 28. I understood it from a financial standpoint because you have these people you can work to death for less than you can pay someone of a senior, but they brought to the culture a non-understanding of human beings, which made me understand why people started to venture out and say, you know, I can do this on my own because I've been through this before, you know, even myself. And usually those people are the ones who are like, I'm done with this. I can do this better on my own. So do you find a lot of people who left the corporate structure because of that reason, they felt that it just wasn't in tuned. Like they were down for the cause, but they felt that the direction just changed and it didn't jive with their philosophy. 
I think that's a big part of it. I see, you know, a lot of, I work with, you know, many different types of entrepreneurs. Some of them are millennials just sort of starting out and have never even had a job wow. before and they're starting a business and that's incredible. But then I also have a lot of people who, what my original avatar or target market was, was kind of myself. So someone who had been in corporate for like 10 to 20 years, but was kind of done. They wanted to tap out and they were ready to start a new venture on their own. And so that's who I really wanted to help. Um, but either way, they're either driven by wanting to do, well, freedom. I would always say freedom is the number one value. Everybody's always off after that laptop lifestyle, right? That ability to just take vacation whenever you want, to travel, to make your own decisions. So freedom, I would say, is the biggest driver. That's the top value that I would say lives kind of within my community and my clients. But there's also this ability to do something that you really, truly believe in. And I think when we look and compare entrepreneurship to the corporate world, there's so much bureaucracy and there's so much time spent. You know, we we're just having this conversation the other day about how, you know, quite often you get stuck having a to-do list of things that actually might not even be relevant, but heck, we said we were going to do it at the beginning of the quarter. So we have to cross it off the list, right? So we have this like old thinking that, you know, doesn't really serve us anymore. And so, you know, in the entrepreneurial world, you get to do the things that are going to move the dial because you're making those decisions. So it's a lot of the, that corporate, um, corporate bureaucracy that I think really gets people frustrated and the lack of leadership. You know, we yeah. have record numbers of employee disengagement these days. It's just, yeah. Insane, <laughs> yeah, that's true. you know, that's and true. on average in the typical workplace, only three hours of work gets done every day. Oh, yeah. I believe that wholeheartedly. Um, I, I've seen it and I continue to see it because we uh, it's it's hard to say. But if you give somebody an objective, you have to give them a long list of objectives and they'll just go tick, 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 tick. Now, what do I do? Oh, thank goodness YouTube is available. <laughs> right. We don't inspire them to think for themselves, right? And that's the unfortunate reality. Yeah. And, and that's a weird thing because, you know, a lot of the, and I've seen this consistently, a lot of the innovation is not with the management. It is with your individual employees because they're the person on the street. They're the person that is interacting and seeing how the product is without a, without a blind eye. They're seeing it for what it is. They're talking to their friends and they're saying, you know, yeah, I've seen where you work, man. But that one thing you guys, eh, eh, it's gross. And they take it back and people go, no, 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 no we're fine. <laughs> but do, let me ask you, do you have a checklist of where you of your starting point for someone to make sure that, OK, they're on board. I have these base, this foundation built. Now we can move forward. So in terms of taking on a new client or what I do with them when we start an engagement? Either or. Either or. So first and foremost, I would say, yeah, there is sort of a qualifying criteria of clients that, you know, are a good fit for me. And it really needs to be someone who is driven with a clear passion and purpose of what they want to do. So as someone just, you know, like in my previous life, I worked with, um, I worked at a risk management software company. And so we worked with tier one banks, a lot of bankers. And so if your objective is, and you know, I just have to say, as most people know, uh, lovely people, but honestly, the most miserable people on the planet because their entire existence is just money, money, money. Yeah. And how do I make more money? And then you get to make that new amount. It's like, how much money is enough? And, you know, we have this belief that once you reach a certain quote unquote destination and they have the you know, this certain amount of money, it's going to make you happy. And that doesn't happen. So I need to work with people who have a clearly defined purpose, a big P purpose and a small P. So your big P is your intrinsic motivator. So how do you want to make this world a better place? What is it that you want to do that you are passionate about? And how do you want to help people? And then your small P key purpose is your business drivers. So it might be having certain financial metrics. It might have be growth metrics. It might be something that you want to actually track and measure. So you have to focus on both. It's not just, we're not just creating for, um, uh, not for profit organizations. So you have to kind of focus on the big P purpose and the small P purpose. 
And then as far as starting an engagement with someone, we always get clarity on purpose, core values, and an objective of what it is that they want to create. So we do a lot of what I call visioneering. So having that big picture goal of what does it look like when you are going to feel successful? When are you going to feel aligned? And so we really blueprint that place of what it's going to feel like because on the journey, there's going to be lots of dips, lots of highs and lows. And so when someone's having a really bad day or they're in that place that they want to give up, I need to pull that out as a tool to remind them, well, this is the destination that we're going to. Remember, you wanted to be able to have the purpose statement realized of helping these people, you know, in this specific way. So really getting that clarity on what it is that we're working towards is so important. Awesome. So what made you start the podcast? Was that just in, were you sipping coffee? Were you watching, um, uh, yeah, so I just said you're watching CBC and all of a sudden you're like, hey, I can be that too. <laughs> yeah, so I just had so much spare time on my hands and I was bored and I didn't know what to know. Absolutely. So so some of the phrases that you never hear entrepreneurs say is, you know, hey, that took way less time than it was supposed to. That cost way less than it was supposed to. That went exactly the way it was supposed to. You never hear entrepreneurs yeah. say that to you. Um, the, the truth behind the podcast was really to start to grow a global community. So I had established, I'm based here in, in beautiful Toronto, Canada. And so I had started the business really, uh, just to build a coaching practice here in the city. And I did that for the first couple of years. And then I started to realize as I was offering workshops and I was doing courses and classes in the city, it was amazing to do that work and really have people come together in a group. But as a facilitator, you can kind of only do that work with like, you know, up to 12 people or so. And I started to see these online programs and people taking like groups of thousands of people at a time. And I thought, why am I playing small? Like, why am I limiting myself to only helping 10 when I could help thousands. And so at that point, I realized I wanted to build more of a global brand and a bigger business and start to offer products online. And so the podcast was really my strategic initiative to focus on building a global community. Good. So you taught classes too, or do you still have the classes? Do you still have the workshops? Do you have the programs that are available for people who may not be able to work directly with you? Yeah, so I've I've actually just, I think in September, I'm going to start offering that again. So I have what's called a conscious business leadership program. Mm -hmm. So what it does is it sort of curates all the common themes and all the exercises that we do in a one-on-one coaching engagement. And so we look at life purpose, we look at core values, we look at the shadow and the parts of ourselves um, that we aren't really familiar with. And we we go through and do all these exercises together as a group. And so I likely will be offering that again in, in September. I had to pause all that work to kind of get the podcast up and launched and some other programs that I had launched. So there's lots of options there. Cool. Do you use Lipson? I absolutely do. I Aren't love they Lipson. the bomb there? <laughs> yeah. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, you know, a lot of the times – I go to Twitter, I go to Google+, Plus, I go to various platforms to find guests, and it is a very hard uptake. Sometimes I send people emails directly, and a lot of times I don't get a response back. But one service that I have used is Radio Guest List, and they have been awesome in um, supplying me with guests because those are the people who want to talk to you, who want to interact with the public. So kudos if you're a podcaster or if you are a person, an author, or if you have a business and you want to get out there, please go to Radio Guest List and sign up for their service. It doesn't cost much and it doesn't cost almost, I think it's almost nothing for if you're a podcaster. That's my kudos to them. Moving on. So what's in your future, buddy? What's what's going on? What's what you said in September, you're going to to, um, move to your courses and your workshops. What about books coming out? What about coming to the U.S.? (laughs) Well, I have actually I have something kind of cool that I launched uh, recently that I would love to talk about. Let's go. 
<laughs> One of the things that I, I've noticed a lot over the years is it's something I call winks from the universe. And you probably realize this in your life, in your business. Uh, you might call it something different. But, you know, it's kind of like that divine guidance, you know, the signs that you get that you should be following along to some other initiative or some other project. I think I had one last night. That's why I couldn't sleep. <laughs> Right, right. We get sudden, we get these surges of ideas, right, kind of come to us. And I like to call them winks from the universe. Like, you you know, you might have five people tell you to go read a specific book. And then you read the book and you think, oh, my gosh, this is exactly the solution to the problem that I've been having. And um, so the winks that I got was, you know, a couple of years ago, I started running destination retreats. So because I'm a yoga teacher, as we talked about, I'm a facilitator, I'm a coach, and I love to travel. I mean, who doesn't love to travel? I started to run these uh, transformative destination retreats, you know, all around the world. And as I did that, I started to have people say to me, oh, well, I, I want to run a retreat. Like, that's my dream is to someday run a retreat. And I said, well, why don't you? And they say, well, I don't know how. Well, as a coach, I mean, that's, you know, that my my spidey sense just kind of goes <laughs> off when I hear, I don't know how, or I'm too scared, or I don't know where to start. Like for me, that's kind of like opportunity, yeah. opportunity. And so what I did is I just um, started to run free workshops here in the city. And I started to do some webinars, just teaching people the five step process of, you know, planning uh, a destination retreat. And then after doing that for so many times uh, for free and getting great feedback from people and seeing how empowered they were just by sharing this really simple knowledge, I actually turned it into my very first online program. Oh, awesome. That's really awesome. Yeah. But you really just said something that was so powerful that many of us miss when we're going out, when we're trying to attract someone, which is sometimes you have to give it away for free. And that is the biggest thing uh, nowadays is to attract. It's like, I don't know if you have Costco there or the, mm -hmm. the big box store, but when you're walking through, they go, ooh, try these fish sticks. And you're like, oh, I got, where are those located? Because you ate the free sample. Yeah. So, so that's one of the biggest attractions to build your audience is just doing a pro bono for someone or some group so that you can I started I used to have a DJ company did the exact same thing ah and boom it's like people are like how much do you charge I'm like how much do you want me to charge <laughs> Right, right. I love it. Well, you know, we also we often look to entrepreneurship and also to technology is a great inspiration as to where business is going and what the trends are. And, you know, we use that a lot in the world of technology is and they call it the freemium model. So you might sign up, you know, let's say for MailChimp. So MailChimp would be free if you only have up to 2000 users. And so that's a um, an online tool that allows you to send out email newsletters and also track, you know, really important data and analytics from the emails that you send. And so they offer a very basic service for free. But then if you want to grow, if you want enhanced functionality, uh, bells and whistles, then you have to start to pay for the service. And so it's a really smart model. And I think we're really starting to use that in, you know, um, in the education and online programs. We're definitely seeing that trend of, you know, if you want someone to understand what it is that you're offering, we'll give them a taste, give them a free course, give them a checklist, give them a free webinar, you know, and I think there's just something really important about that of saying, Hey, we're building a relationship here. Cause really all business is relationships. Yeah. And so how do you build a relationship? Well, there's the no like trust factor. So if I want you to get to know me, Emmett, I can say, okay, well we could jump on a podcast of course, but I could send you something and you get to see actually what it is that I have. And you can see that I, you know, I put my money where my mouth is and that um, what I have to create and offer you is really, really valuable. And it starts to build that trust based relationship. Yeah, you, um, you did it really well. I really liked your podcast. I heard the one with the two sisters in the brewing company. Oh, the yes, the Beer <laughs> Sisters. They yeah. are actually in uh, Dallas right now. They've been invited to a huge conference there. So um, they are making their way across the states, really growing their brand. They're doing fantastic. So when are you coming to the United States? When are you going I, to branch out and, and start getting it done here? Because this 
I hate to say it, but there are far more people in the United States than Canada. <laughs> there are. I believe there are four, four times more people in the U.S. Yeah, so I would love that. And that is earlier you did ask about my book. And, you know, we all have a book in us, right? So I actually um, – my podcast is different than yours. So I love what you've done, and I love this ability to interview people around the world. I have a bit of a reputation of doing things differently. So I wanted my podcast to be different than everyone else. And so I chose the harder path, as I often do, which is um, creating a content-based show with a few exceptions of sometimes I interview my clients and feature them. Um, but I'd say 80% of my episodes are teaching people and really curating the content from my coaching uh, sessions that I do. So we talk about fear, yeah. following the fear. We talk about breakdowns and breakthroughs. We talk about the dip of entrepreneurship. We talk about realizing your life purpose, all those important lessons that are really relevant to entrepreneurs. And so I create those as episodes. And so after doing that now for hundred and almost 100 episodes Ooh. I do have the content for a book when did you so. start your podcast by the way uh, it was the fall of 2015 October of 2015 wow so that's about one a week consistently yeah, yeah. yeah. good job yeah I yeah I started this in November of last year. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good for you. I've been working like a beast. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a lot. Can we just take a second? Because I have this really bad habit of telling the truth. I, you know, I appreciate the people on my path who have told me the truth that like entrepreneurship was really hard. And now I'm like, thank you for telling me that. Because mm -hmm. I think we have the tendency of really lying or making it look like it's so glamorous all the time. And so can you and I just tell everyone out there who wants to create a podcast? It's a lot of work. It's I mean, it's Incredible, but it's incredible work. And so this is about my fifth podcast. I was podcasting in 2007. Wow. I'm, I'm a technology freaking way above the curve. <laughs> and th back then you had no m metrics. You didn't, uh, you couldn't do the RSS feed. Things are far easier now than they once were. But that's not the big thing. So you do all this work, you schedule appointments, or you just sit down and you talk into the mic and you get some music and you get your intros and you get your outros and you make this beautiful product and then you have to put it somewhere. And then you put it somewhere and then you wonder why no one is listening like four uploads a, a month. Right. It's a lot of work. It is literally a daily action. You have to think about your product like you're introducing it every minute, every second of every day to the public because A, the, the, the mindset of our global constituency is very narrow. What they see now, they forget in 10 minutes. And you have to do really great things. Like for me, I'm not the best writer. I know, it makes sense to me, but I don't think it makes sense to other people. I've gotten better, which is part of the process. That's part of being an entrepreneur. You go in, you make mistakes, you recognize those mistakes, and you correct your path just like steering a ship. A ship doesn't just go one way. It's constantly being correcting its path. So um, that's part of it. The other thing is, is just trying to schedule things. There's so much involved with it. But I love every minute of it. As a matter of fact, when I'm doing this, like six hours can go by. And I've wrote a blog post, edited the sound, introduced mm -hmm. the bed music, taken out all the parts where I think aren't relevant or the noise is not right. Or sometimes it takes me 20 minutes just to adjust the audio from and bring it up a level. And you have to, hope it works and then it doesn't work but there's a lot of work but what I would say is if you are into podcasting model yourself after those that you admire because the way we see further is to stand on the shoulders of giants and mm -hmm. so stand on the shoulders of those giants and, and but don't look down at them look at them as your base and and, and use that but you also have to learn about audio. You have to learn about video. You have to learn about content wraparound. You have to learn about keywords. 
There is so much involved, but it is a great thing because it keeps your brain working. It keeps you relevant in society. And you begin to see the world differently, particularly if you're an entrepreneur. It is a great medium for you to connect with your audience. Oh, absolutely. And what I would say is, you know, always I have to take the the business coach perspective, which is to make sure that everybody has a purpose and a strategy behind it. Because it sounds crazy to say this out loud, but a lot of people just start a podcast because they think it's cool. And, you know, this is where you and I have to be honest and we have to share that, you know, hashtag tough love <laughs> is that podcasts take a lot of work. They are amazing. You can see amazing results. And, you know, it's kind of like Christmas every Monday morning when I log in and see my stats. It is amazing and it's very fulfilling, but it is a lot of work. So what I would say is make sure that everybody has a strategy set out. So is it, you know, for me, it was about growing my global network so that I can sell my products and my services uh, online. And for other people, it might be growing your community. For other people, it might be actually, um, you know, affiliate marketing or other uh, ways of making money directly from the podcast. But please make sure people that you have a strategy behind what it is before you dive in and start doing it. I have a question for you. Yeah. Do you, <laughs> do you find that your friends don't listen to your podcast, but your closest friends don't listen to it, but your kind of close friends do <laughs> like your business associates more listen to it. It's funny. I have, um, I have quite a few people that I, in my world that listen regularly and they will literally email me and say, Hey, you wrote this episode just for me, didn't you? And you know, I get that a lot, but it is funny how I have some people who are in my inner, inner circle and they didn't listen right away until <laughs> like, like literally, I will literally grab their phone out of their hand and like subscribe <laughs> them right then and there. That's, that's how diligent I am. And I wanted to also tell you, I recently had my business cards reprinted. Oh, that's awesome. And I'm just holding up the video here. It's hard to see. Um, but I created on the back of them. So I have just like a normal business card on the front. But in the back, I created a little white box where I can actually prescribe them a specific episode. So if we're talking oh, about something great. and they have money blocks, I can say, hey, listen to this the three part series, which is episode, you know, X, Y and Z on the money mindset. And so it's like gives them something to take away and then they can go to my website and, and listen to them. Now, for those of you who don't see the video, would you probably probably won't because we made this agreement <laughs> is that it looks like her business card almost looks like a coaster that you would sit your beer on, which would be an awesome thing. Just think if you went to a seminar and just threw that down <laughs> as for everybody to sit their waters on, but it has a lot of space and information and graphic information so that you it immediately grabs your attention. So that's a really good thing. Where'd you grab those from? So these are off Moo. Um, so they're square business cards with rounded corners. They have a really nice varnish and finish off them. So you can order them just online. It's a UK-based company. So it's Moo.com. M-O-O? Like yeah. The dot cow. Com. Like the cow. <laughs> like the sound that the cow makes. Uh, but fantastic cards, really quick, fantastic service. And um, yeah, it's just nice to do something a little bit different, right? Like how many business cards you get every single week. Uh, so you want to, when you hand it to somebody, you want to do something differently so that you make an impact and so that you're memorable with them. So do you have a, a, a support group around you uh, of consisting of family, spouses and things like that? Or do you or was it one of those things when you said, I'm going to go in this direction here? And they were like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> no, I have to I have to brag about my family and my friends, because when I said I was going to make uh, this shift to become an entrepreneur, everyone said it was an amazing idea. And no one has doubted me on one thing at any point. That's good because, you know, some people don't have that infrastructure that they can rely on. And they're actually going from the opposite. I, it's not me. My family knows my family and friends know to leave me alone because I'm a special kind of creative person, so to speak. But they know he's just different. He's just going to do what he does. And it's either going to work or it's not going to work either way. He's going to be happy because he did it. <laughs> yeah. And I think, I think you're right. I think it's two parts. They know you well enough to not challenge you on it. Right. Yeah. And they're just like, yeah, that's him. Cause I remember when I wrote my first book, it was just out of the blue. I was like, I'm going to write a book and the book downloaded. And I just was typing for like three weeks. I was typing at dinner, <laughs> eating spaghetti. I was typing like in bed before I went to sleep and I did it. 
And people were asking me, so where's the book? I'm like, I probably sold maybe 100, 200 copies. I was like, but I learned so much in the process Mm -hmm. about things. So when people ask me, you know, about things, they go, what do you know about that? I'd be like, I did this, 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 and this. They're like, what? So sometimes it's not just about money. Sometimes it's about literally the journey. It is about learning because it's going to help you somewhere else in your life when you get to... um, it's it's like building a house. Every brick is not quite the same and you have to adjust it. So you're gonna go through and you're gonna make this house, you're gonna adjust, blah, 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 blah. But then you're gonna get to the last brick and you go, it doesn't quite fit, but you're going to know how to put it in there because you've made all these adjustments along the way. Yeah, so beautifully said. And that's why I say like being an entrepreneur is about personal growth and it is about learning and learning the skills yourself. But the process of what you went through to learn how to write, building that muscle of discipline of writing on a regular basis. And, you know, there's so much that you learn along the way. And that happens with a lot of businesses, mine included, is that what you envision when you first start out, which is why we, you know, do things. (laughs) lean and agile so that you don't spend a ton of money on a website, like put something up really quickly and then we'll test it out before we dive in and spend 50 grand on a website. Like good point. Oh, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. You made, you just made a really good point about our vision. Sometimes in, in, in this works out with prayer as well. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we ask for something and we have this very succinct, specific vision of it. And then it comes to us and we're still asking for it. It just doesn't quite look. It's not quite the same tan or it's not quite the same shape. So just because you have a very specific um, vision for something, sometimes the outside world will tell you, no, it needs to be like this. It's the same thing. It just looks and feels slightly different. And, and, and that's one of the things I had to learn when starting a business or because I've started several is that I was like, it's going to be exactly like this. And then I get there and I'm like, it's not like that, but it's working. <laughs> Yes. And I always, I do, tr- I totally agree with you. And I think, you know, having run seven businesses, you get it. And, and I think sometimes the universe sends us things or directions that, yeah, might not look for what we originally asked for, but often, and you can tell me if you agree with this, it's often better because the universe has so many other resources beyond what we just have in our own, you know, single mind and our own limited human experience that, you can often be delivered something that's bigger and better and probably easier than what you would have done your way. So that's why it's nice to have a plan, but also be willing and being at, be agile enough to like adapt the plan along the way. So when are you going to come out with your yoga video or yoga book or your series for the body? <laughs> So that's funny. I haven't actually, ha- I don't have a plan for that. My first book, because I, I actually haven't written a book yet. What? But as I, <laughs> I know, as, as I said, the podcast is has prepared me with the content and all this philosophy on how to build a, a conscious business, you know, with, you know, aligned with your purpose, your core values, building community is another really key part of it, but just allowing for this uh, essence of your personal growth to happen along the journey. And so the first step is because I need to be strategic, right? I need to launch this all under the proper brand. So I have the conscious business podcast, then it needs to be the book, then it needs to be, you know, retreats and everything underneath that brand. And then, you know, maybe we'll look at some meditation and yoga DVDs as a phase two. You know two. what? I'm going to talk offline, but I have an idea for you. It, you involves, do. it involves me and you. We probably have to work together because it is, it's probably vitally important. And when I see it, you're going to go, no, boop. <laughs> Because it's real, I'll tell you about it in a little bit. So okay. So let me ask. Let me let no. Let you tell me all the places that you can be reached, seen, uh, observed, consumed. Tell me everything you got and how people can reach you. All right, Emmett. So the the best place to find me is actually start from the website. So thecorporateyogi.com. From there, you can find all my social handles. Uh, you can also access the podcast from there, or you can find it in iTunes or Stitcher. So it's Conscious Business with the Corporate Yogi. And so if you are an entrepreneur or you're thinking about starting a new business, you know, get this content that'll really help you build that solid foundation. And please focus on you know your personal growth as part of the journey 
journey rather than getting so far down the the path and then you have this breakdown because you don't understand why things aren't working out. But if you can do that inner work first, build that solid foundation, then you will be so much more successful in business. Good. And what is the number one reason someone should seek you out? Go ahead. Yeah. If they are starting a new business or if they have recently started a business in that sort of one to two year phase and they really, really want help growing the business or if they, you know, if they feel lost or they just aren't sure really what their next steps are, that's the best time to reach out and see if we're a good fit. So I don't know about um, Canada, but the United States, you have to incorporate if you're starting a business pretty much. But, Mm -hmm. you know, I have a different philosophy. My thing is go make money first, then start then incorporate. So see if it's kind of viable, see if it can work. And when somebody wants to give you a check, because that's how I started my business. That's how I got incorporated because someone signed a check in the business name that I had made up and I had no accounts. (laughs) Right. That set me off on a journey. Is it the um, same to incorporate in Canada as it is the U.S.? Which yes, you can. You, you don't you do not need to incorporate right away. So you can run a business for a few years, see how it goes and um, and then take care of that later on or never. A lot of a lot of clients that I have have actually never incorporated because they haven't needed to. So I personally did incorporate my business before I even had my first client just because I had very clear guidance of what this business was and what it was meant to do. So Um, That's how much I believed in myself. I didn't know 100% what I was going to do under the brand of the corporate yogi, but I knew that this business of, you know, combining my spiritual beliefs with my business background and, you know, personal growth was somehow going to create this amazing business. Yeah. And it did. Yeah. Well, you know, America is the Sioux Nation, and and I'm not talking about the indigenous people either, where you have to protect your your. Litigation, yeah, yeah, because yeah. we people will sue here in a heartbeat. You're like, you know, uh, you stepped on my toe while we were in that meeting. I guess I'll have to sue you. <laughs> Actually, funny story, because I actually did one of my yoga teacher trainings in L.A., and that was one of the things that blew me away was how much the teacher said, don't go near the students, like let alone, you know, sometimes in yoga we'll give tiny little adjustments. You're not really pushing or forcing someone's body, but you might, you know, tap their shoulder to get them to soften their shoulder. And uh, and they were very, very strict about that. Do not go near your students. Like don't even mimic touching them. And that's kind of sad because often as a yoga teacher, you need to really connect with your students because they need to feel that love and that attention in a, in a studio. But I would t- teach very differently in the U S yeah. Well, you know, we're in a weird space, um, cosmically. So a lot of times, uh, crown here, this one starts to go crazy just for no reason at all. And usually is something about the world is about is happening or has happened or about to happen. So, you know, and it's weird because a lot of times we we're more connected now, but we're less connected, uh, person in person, um, in the United States. I see that myself because people are just so online that they don't know how to interact with a human being, which is really funny to me. But this has been a great, great, great uh, conversation. Is there anything you have for the Billionaire Lifestyle audience? And have I missed anything? Yeah, no, the only other thing that I would throw out, Emmett, thank you again so much for this opportunity to chat to you and also to your community. Uh, If there is anybody out there who is, I did share the podcast, but if there's anybody who is curious about running retreats, uh, they can check out um, my other website. So it's retreatu.co. And I have a free, as we talked about today, I have a free online course that people can take that teaches them the basics of becoming a retreat leader. So that website is retreatu, R-E-T-R. E-A-T-U dot C-O. Awesome. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, this has been the Billionaire Lifestyle. Julie, thank you so much for being on the show. And as I always say, you guys are very special out there in the audience. You're special to me. Remember, please drop me a line It could because one of the best things I got was I got an email from someone in Malaysia who said, hey, thanks for the shout out, um, letting you us know that you know that we listen and that one thing motivated me to no end when just someone said hey 
I see what you're doing. I acknowledge what you're doing and thank you for what you're doing that it keeps us going because like she said, this is not the easiest thing to do and to produce, but it's a labor of love and it's a labor of service to me. But remember you are a billion to one, which makes you a billionaire. You have a billion cells. You have a, a billion thoughts since you were born. You have a, at least a billion emotions that ones that you haven't even tapped into that are affecting you, which makes you a billionaire. So don't think about money. Think about living. How can you expand your consciousness and expand your experience to live the maximum? Till next time, this has been the Billionaire Lifestyle with Miss Julie. Till next time, peace. And we're off. Wow, well done.